Welcome to MEM 17003, Assist in the Provision of On-The-Job Training. This lecture is a supplement to your student workbook and other resources made available to you. If you haven't yet done so, download the participants workbook, read it, and then continue on with this lecture. Student resources. If you don't have access to desktop publishing software like Microsoft Office, LibreOffice is a free alternative. You can download it for all major operating systems. It's stable, reliable, and it's free. The people that create LibreOffice also create a product called LibreCAD. It's a great entry level CAD package. If you've got a Google account, you've got access to Google Docs. This is the same as Office 365 and LibreOffice, but you will need a internet connection as this is a cloud-based system. Google Docs enables you to create documents, spreadsheets, and slides. If you have a Google account, you also have 15 gigabytes of free cloud storage. All of the documents and resources associated with this unit are available on PMoodle. Make sure to check the resources section of PMoodle as we are constantly uploading resource materials. Hydraulics and Pneumatics Technicians and Engineers Guide is a valuable reference and a recommended reading for these units. A download link is available from the resources section of PMoodle. Moodle is available on your favorite mobile device. You can download it for Windows, Apple and Android portable devices. All of the PERTEC documents, for example, work instructions, safety data sheets are available from PConnect. Keep in mind that all the documents referenced in these units are also available from PMoodle. All of the parts and adapters mentioned in these units are referenced from the PERTEC catalogues. The YouTube channel of the month is Cutting Edge Engineering. They have some great instructional videos on the machining of hydraulic components. Pause the video now to screenshot or record the YouTube address. Before we look at the main lecture, let's have a look at some important rules about delivering training. Rule number one, know your subject matter. Am I ready for any questions? Are there any gray areas in my knowledge? Rule number two, be punctual and be reliable. Implement a no excuses approach. It's human nature. People don't forget the 50 times that you were on time and remember to bring them something, but they'll always remember that one time where you forgot. I always remember one of my mentors, he told me that the student should be able to set their watch by you. Rule number three, be prepared. Am I fumbling with AV equipment or fumbling with documentation? Is everything ready before the students arrive in the classroom or to the apparatus that I'm training them on? Have I rehearsed and reviewed the material that I'm delivering? Rule number four, be consistent. Rule number five, be empathetic. Am I sensitive to the person's particular situation? Rule number six, avoid unconscious bias. 
have I made assumptions about the student based on race, gender, socioeconomic background? Rule number seven, avoid the smartest person in the room syndrome. What does that mean? As a teacher or an instructor, my job is to deliver material and information effectively and efficiently. It's not my job to be the smartest person in the room. If you don't know the answer to a question, just tell the student you don't know and you'll find out for them. It's important to remember, we need to get the answer to the student in a reliable, timely manner to be consistent. One of my mentors once told me, show me the person that thinks they're the smartest person in the room and I'll show you the dumbest person in the room. Once again, we can refer back to our Pertech work smart method. We think, we plan, we do, and we review. Let's now proceed to our main part of the lecture. This is assist in the provision of on the job training. Again, we'll be referencing our student workbook for this section. Before we can deliver effective workplace training, we need to first determine why we are providing this training and who's going to benefit from this training. Let's use the seven step strategy from your student workbook to get an idea of uh, how this training will align with our business objectives. Step one, what is the purpose of training staff members? Is the training to improve workforce skills, fix a problem, comply with government regulations? provide a career path for employees. In the case of Pertech, could it speed up or make more efficient uh, hose manufacturing? Can we use it to increase our customer base? Can we use it to expand the business? Another advantage of Training staff is the multi-skilling aspect. And let's not forget the improvement of quality. Step two, find the gaps. Are there any problems that need to be addressed? Are there any skill sets missing or require improvement? Sometimes a TNA or a training needs analysis will be performed to investigate any holes in skill requirements. An employee's skills, knowledge and abilities will sometimes be referred to as a KSA. Step three, set strategic development objectives. This is the planning stage. Here the focus is on skills, knowledge and abilities to meet the business's vision. Here's an example. If your business objective is to reduce production time, your learning and development goals would probably relate to upskilling staff to use machinery more effectively and efficiently and manage their time a lot better. Step four, communicate training purpose and objectives. It is important to keep all stakeholders briefed and up to date on the purpose and objectives of training. If stakeholders feel excluded or disenfranchised, they're more likely not to engage or be receptive to new ideas or changes. It's important that training and upgrading of skills is viewed as a win-win scenario rather than a jump through hoops because I said so activity. Communication and inclusivity is the key to moving an organization towards its long-term training goals. Step five, deliver the perfect training. 
Training needs to be engaging, accessible, convenient and suited to your target audience if it's going to be effective. There's a lot of technology out there and trainees expect the material to be consistent with what they're exposed to day to day. Things like online content, videos, phone apps and digital materials are some of the resources that most people expect. Learning management systems are a common way of delivering material to trainees. You're already familiar with Moodle or PMoodle. Moodle is a learning management system. There are many systems out there available with free trials or limited uh, user numbers, and they're quite inexpensive. So you might even consider setting up your own LMS for delivering your particular training material. Having resources located in the learning management system or LMS enables the student to access materials at any time for review or for study. Step six, support new learning in the workplace. Once again, communication is the key. All stakeholders need to be on board in relation to training, mentoring and coaching. Access to resources like machinery and consumables is critical for efficient delivery of training. A culture of continuous learning should be encouraged in the workplace. Many organisations require all staff members to engage in personal and professional development as part of their workplace obligations. Step seven, measure and repeat. It is important to monitor the training for effectiveness and get feedback from the trainees and their supervisors. We've all completed a questionnaire at the end of training or at a seminar. This is a great way of getting feedback from the participants and stakeholders. These can be made anonymous to promote frankness. The learning process goes both ways. The trainees learn new skills and the trainers improve their skills from the feedback that they get from the trainees and the stakeholders. Let's look at an example. Let's design some training for a hose cutoff saw. In this example, we want to be able to grab anyone off the street or from the office and train them on using the hose cutoff saw. I'm going to introduce the trade method to you today. The trade method should look familiar. It's very similar to the Pertec Work Smart method, but with an extra step. Instead of think, plan, do, review, it's think, and then plan is replaced with research and acquire. We still got the do part and evaluate is same as review. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna think. Before we do anything, Let's think about this. Firstly, what am I going to be doing? Well, obviously I'm going to be training somebody on using the hose cut off saw. Do I have the skills to train somebody? Do I have the knowledge? Do I know how to use the machine myself? Do I have the equipment and resources to train somebody? Who will I be training? What problems could I be facing in the personal skill level, bad attitude, Will my training align with the organization's strategic plan and basic requirements? The next step is R, research. Second part of our trade method is R for research. This is the part where I start collecting resource materials. Are there any instruction manuals that came with the machine? Are there any training materials from the supplier? Are there any work instructions? Are there any risk assessments or safe work method statements for the cutoff saw? What about online resources? Are there any YouTube channels, vlogs or blogs relating to this cutoff saw? Are there any government resources that I can use? And very, and most importantly, key training outcomes, mission critical skills that I need to be able to teach 
on the hose cutoff saw. Well, I have got an instruction manual. It's covered in grease, but I'm going to scan that and make that available. I've gone to the supplier's website. They don't have any materials there apart from a data sheet that you can download for the uh, a cutoff saw. So I'll make that also available. Work instructions. Yes, I had a look on P-Connect and I found a work instruction for measurement and hose cutting. If the cutoff saw is currently in use, there'll definitely be a risk assessment, but this would be a good idea for the student to complete a risk assessment as part of the induction process on the cutoff saw. I did a quick search on Google. There are a couple of uh, YouTube channels and uh, websites dedicated to the Better Swage product. And there were a couple of uh, uh, pages uh, dedicated to the cutoff saw also. So a quick search on Google. Uh, we'll make these available. And again, I'd make these links available to the students through the learning management system. Are there any government resources available to me to help me deliver this workplace training? The Australian government outlines what skills and knowledge are associated with certain units or competency. The cut of saw is covered in the above unit, which is the MEM 05005, which some of your first year apprentices uh, would have completed. Although overkill for general workplace training, it does provide a structured recognized format. These unit description documents can be downloaded from www.training.gov.au for free. Pause the video now or take a screenshot to record the web address. Here we can see detailed in the unit description document all the key performance criteria for the unit. There is also an assessment document available to help you create uh, relevant assessments for these units. Last but not least, are there key training outcomes or the mission critical skills? We have already mentioned key training outcomes and mission critical skills. The work instruction will come in handy here as it contains all of Pertex criteria for the correct hose cutting and ensures we align with the company's objectives. First objective is safety. Correct PPE, guarding on the machine, machine condition and the blade condition. Although a risk assessment and a safe work method statement already exists for this machine, we'll be requiring the student to create a risk assessment and safe work method statement for this machine as part of their induction and training process. Another critical skill is maintaining the overall length tolerances when we're cutting hoses. Another critical skill is making sure that the hose is cut off square or within plus or minus five degrees. Another critical feature is having a clean cut. The hose cutting procedure should not fray, burn or deform the hose wire reinforcement or the rubber inner tube. The next step in our trade method is acquire. We're going to need access to a hose cutoff saw in good condition. The hose cutoff saw should be located in a clean, appropriate location with all the necessary tools and accessories available. Obviously, hose should be made available and uh, ideally in a, in a number of uh, sizes. Offcuts and discarded hoses can also be used for practice purposes. PPE and marking pens. 
tape measures for measuring the length of the hose and protractors for measuring the, the cutoff angle of the hose. The next step in the trade method is the D for do. As part of my do, I'll be using a training checklist to make sure I stick to my training plan. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do an introduction and safety talk. Then we're going to look at appropriate PPE and the usage of the PPE. Then we're going to look at power sources to the machine and turning the machine on. Then we're going to familiarize ourselves with operating the machine. We're going to pull levers, turn things on and off, move things, slide things, look at the accessories. Then we're going to look at the blades, the blade speeds, and have a bit of a chat on uh, work holding. Then we're going to create a risk assessment and safe work method statement for the cutoff saw. Then I'm going to perform a couple of cutting demonstrations. Then I'm going to ask the trainee to cut off some hose lengths. I use the checklist for the training. Now I'll use a checklist for the assessment. With this particular assessment, I'll be requiring the student to cut three lengths of three different diameter hoses. Here I've only had the uh, three eight hose listed, but the student would go on and cut the hose lengths. I would check for hoses being in the correct length tolerance. I check the squareness of the end and I check the hose condition of each end. In this example, the 500 millimeter hose had one end that was considerably outside the five plus or minus five degrees uh, squareness. So I asked them to recut this hose. Last step in our trade method is evaluate. Very similar to review in our think, plan, do, review, per tech, work smart method. In this case, I'll be doing two evaluations. I'll be evaluating myself and I'll be evaluating the student. How do I feel the session went? Could I have done something differently? Were there any unexpected problems or questions I couldn't answer? Did anything go wrong? Was the trainee engaging? Now for the trainee. How does a trainee feel about the training? Best thing to do is get the trainee to complete a questionnaire at the end of the training or ask them specific questions about the training and encourage the student to supply feedback. Another part of the evaluation process is to record and file the results and all the artifacts from the training as used as evidence, future reference, or for analysis purposes.